Howdy folks, we're back again. Another animate uh, video where we're gonna learn about the timeline here. So I'm gonna just start drawing things uh, and telling you about how to progress frame by frame. So I got my stage here. It's uh, 1920 by 1080. Um, we haven't talked about this yet. This is FPS, which stands for frames per second. And if you look down here at our timeline, you'll see that if we count these little boxes here, we get to 24 frames every one second. 24 frames a second is standard for uh, film. 30 frames a second would be standard for TV. And uh, some video games and sports and things are going all the way up to 120 frames a second. But we're gonna keep things really simple for ourselves. And we're gonna go way down to 10 frames a second. Um, when you create your own animation, you might want to put that up back to 24 frames a second because it just looks more natural, but we're going to learn about this by going down to 10 frames a second. You can see here, 10 frames every second. Uh, all right, so I'm going to start drawing here so I can have a ball roll down a hill. So I'm going to go to my brush tool, which is B, change the color, do, 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 do. I'm going to go all the way around here, close the gap. And then I'm going to fill that with green. And you'll see I've gone off the edge of my uh, stage. And that's totally okay. Your animation will be constricted to your stage. We could even, if we zoom out and pan over here, we could even draw things off of our stage over here. And they won't show up at all. Which means you can sort of have something waiting in the wings of your stage. Kind of like an actual stage play that could come out later. And that's some times a useful place to, to store objects. Okay, I'm going to zoom back in. By the way, zooming in on Animate is different than Illustrator. Photoshop, you hold down Control and the middle mouse button. But you can still pan around with Space Bar and uh, the mouse button. Okay, so we have our, our uh, hills here. So I'm going to come in here and call that hills. And uh, I'm going to create a new layer. Call that sky. And as you'll see, we're going to change um, layers quite often. A long time ago when animation was done by hand they did a lot of different layers and in fact a very simple animation might even have 20 or 30 layers. So it's a really handy thing to just create a layer for everything. When in doubt create a new layer for it. it just makes things easier. You see I also have the stroke off for most of this here. It just also also makes our life easier. Um, here we go. I'm just going to draw a bit of a sunshine here. It's a beautiful, sunshiny day. I think there's a song about that. Wow, look at that. Gorgeous. Okay. So I have all these in layers here. I'm going to label my layers, otherwise, I get lost. I can recommend you do the same thing. I'm going to, now that I have my background kind of set, I'm going to make a folder for my background, and I call that background. And I'm going to drag these three layers into the background. So they nested it there. Now if I create a new layer, I'm going to call this ball. And I'm going to draw a ball. Okay, but it's not on my background layer. In fact, I'm going to lock my background layer. So now it's all locked in there. So I can't make any changes to it, but that's okay. All right, here we go. I'm going to draw my ball. No stroke. Pink is a easy color to see. And I have a ball here on my stage in the background on a new layer. It's got to be on a new layer. Okay, I'm going to take my black selection arrow and click on my ball here. Okay, you can see now that I'm on this layer, I can't click on anything else because I'm not on the right layer. That's, that's good. We want it like that. So we have a ball here and uh, we're going to animate this ball. So I'm going to go up here to insert timeline. That's the layer panel on the bottom. And I'm going to enter a new keyframe. And I'll tell you the difference between frames and keyframes once I got a few uh, on the go. So I got a new keyframe here. Now you see we have this red scrubbing bar here. It goes from frame one, zero seconds, to frame two at 0.1 seconds. Okay, and I'm going to take this and I'm going to roll the ball down the hill. I'm going to go back up to insert, timeline, keyframe, roll the ball down the hill. 
Insert, timeline, keyframe, roll the ball down the hill. Insert, timeline, keyframe, roll the ball down the hill. Wow, I am five frames in and I'm half a second into my animation. Now if I want to see my animation, I can click on this little thing here. Boop, and there it goes, rolling down the hill. I'll take this back, pull it back there. And now we can zoom into our uh, timeline here to see these little boxes because this makes it a lot easier. Okay, so now we have two seconds here. I'll use this little uh, slider over here. And you can see each keyframe that we entered for the ball here is a gray box with a black dot in it. These frames here for our background, because they're locked into place, are a black dot in the first frame. And then after that, nothing changes on these layers. And that's really important to understand because the black dot means it's a keyframe and a keyframe means something changes. These frames with no dot are just frames. The background is still part of the animation, but nothing's changing in it. Does that make sense? I hope so. Um, so we could go in here, for example, and add a another new layer and at frame uh, five, half a second into it, we can start drawing here, black. We can start drawing like a bird flying into our animation. And now if we wanted to insert a new keyframe on our ball, insert timeline keyframe. We have the bird and the ball and you'll see it just appeared. Okay, but we're gonna ignore the bird of the ball here. I'm just gonna delete that, drag it into the trash box. We have a ball here. It didn't move this time, so I'm gonna move it a little bit more. Okay, and then uh, if only there was a way to make this shortcut of inserting a new keyframe. While well, you're in luck, there is a way. Is there a shortcut button? It's F6. So at the very top of your keyboard, you should have function buttons, F1 through F12. If you press F6, it creates a new one and it makes it really fast to do this work. And we're gonna go all the way to two seconds of animation. My ball's jumping now. Okay, so now if we pull it back and let it go, we can see our animation. Wow, pretty cool. Okay. Um, you could even do things like pull the scrubber over here, and once you get to two seconds, you can transform the ball. So that's a tool I haven't told you about, but if you use the free transform button here, the Q button, I can press F6, create a new keyframe, and instead of the ball rolling, it's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until we get to three seconds oh, almost there Just pressing f6 each time to insert a new keyframe there okay now if we pull our button back and we watch our animation it rolls and then it just starts growing for no reason. But that's how to insert keyframes. You'll see here we have on our timeline, we have new keyframes for each ball because the ball changes each time, but the background remains the same. That's the video.